name is Kern. Today I'm very excited to stand here at the stage of NG Co and uh, uh, telling you guys what, you, what I have discovered recently about Decorator. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Kern or Sian, and uh, I work as an independent contractor. I uh, help my clients architecting digital solutions and uh, bring them best practice of web development. I'm also a writer of Anger in Depth, which is a great publication. Uh, I have been, I've learned a lot from there and uh, I encourage you guys to check it out. My talk today is about how to use Decorator to decouple NG on changes. Let me explain more about it. Suppose we have a name card component with two input properties, name and age. Okay, my question is, how to listen to the change of input properties. For example, if I wanna, uh, I, I, I wanna console lock uh, name changed whenever names change, right? If uh, I wanna console lock name, age changed every time age gets changed. Okay, you might have your answer, right? So the word that pop up ahead is ng on changes. Yes, ng on changes works. So uh, basically, if any one of the input property uh, gets changed, ng on changes lifecycle hooks will be triggered, and uh, then we can use if statement to determine which input property is changed, right? However, I'm not a big fan of ng on changes, to be honest. The reason is because first, we need to handle all input properties changes inside one giant block, which is ng on changes. Um, and uh, we we need to uh, and we need to use if statement the boil play to to separate them out right. And the second thing is about poor typing. Uh, some of you might already know that uh, ng on changes takes in one parameter which it has typed simple changes. Let's take a look at what what's the simple change. So here the simple changes is a object defined by Angular, huh? um, and uh, its its keys. Are, are any strings, which is problematic. Why? Because if we have a typo here, say if changes dot typo name, then TypeScript won't really recognize it. TypeScript won't complain about it, right? So this will fail silently. Another thing about the typing is that for simple change, so um, uh, um, by the way, the uh, Angular uh, use class instead of interface, but here I, I use interface to, just to, to, be, to, to make it easier to understand now. So the simple change uh, has a previous value and a current value. They are all typed to any, but it would be better if they can type to a specific type. For example, they, it would be better if they can type to string if I use it for name, right? And type to number if I use it for for uh, age. I've seen a lot of people using this kind of solution by combining setter with input, right? And uh, it works. Uh, so basically this, uh, for one input property, you need to have three pieces. The first at the top is a private variable. And this variable is to store the current value, right, of the input property. And uh, at the bottom, we have a getter function, which is, which is simply returning the private variable. And uh, finally, we have a getter function, uh, sorry, a setter function, which sits together with the input property, uh, input decorator. And uh, whenever the, the input uh, property is to be changed, the setter function will take over the task and, uh, and uh, doing two things. The first is to store the new value to the private variable. And the second is to execute uh, some your customized code, like uh, name is changed, right? However, okay, the good thing about it is that it decouples on changes. However, there is um, several cons I don't really like it. So first is about too many pieces. We can see that for just the two input properties, we need to have six pieces and they can be rearranged in any order, right? Which makes the code hard to maintain, hard to read. And uh, for the getter function and the private variable declaration, it's just a boilerplate, right? And uh, finally, private variable, not really private. By private variable, I mean these two underscored variable. 
why they they are truly private to the outside world. However, they are not private within this component, right? So by by private within this co component, I mean, I mean, hey, don't touch me directly. If you want to read me, just use the getter function. If if you want to write me, just use the setter function, right? But this rule is not enforced. And uh, people would easily make a mistake by accessing a private variable directly. For example, if, if we need to write a grow method, which simply increment the age by one, then apparently the first way is wrong because the first way will not trigger the setter function, right? But, but this, so the, the reason is that the, the uh, not allowing you to access the private variable, the rule is not enforced. Let's think about how to solve this problem nicely. So we want to listen to the change of, say, name property. It would be amazing if we, can, if we could have a, a callback function which can just put aside, just beside the name property, right? And every time, hopefully we can make it work in a way that uh, every time na name is changed, then the callback function is triggered. Same for H, right? It has a lot of good stuff. First, it also decouples and join changes, right? And the second, no need to change existing code. If we want this feature, we just add, need to add this block of code. If we don't want it, we just remove it, right? And finally, it's easy to read and use. It's apparently, right? Okay, so I just introduced my blueprint of, of what, I, what I want this to be working like, right? And uh, now let's try to implement the on, on change decorator. Okay, but before we do it, do you know JavaScript getter and setter well enough? Okay, let's, let's pause the main thread a little bit and uh, let me introduce you guys a little deeper knowledge into getter and setter. This is a TypeScript uh, class person with a getter and setter for the property H. When I compile this into ES5, we can see how getter and setter is implemented under the hood. So the object of defined property is called with three parameters. The first is the prototype of a person. The second is the prop property key. The third one is a configuration object. It, it has a key get, the value is the getter function. And another key set, the value is the setter function. Okay, so with this knowledge in mind, we can rewrite the class in this way, in TypeScript. We can, instead of declaring getter and setter within this class, we can modify a existing class by calling object.defineProperty property with the same three parameters. Okay, so a key takeaway of this slide is that we can use object.defineProperty property to modify a existing class and add and configure a setter and a, uh, and a getter for a particular uh, key property. The first parameter is prototype of the class. The second one is the property key. The third one is a configuration object containing getter and setter information. Okay, that's enough knowledge for getter and setter. Let's get back to our main thread to implement the on-change decorator. This, this is our first, uh, on the, right, the left hand side is our first implementation of on change decorator. On the right hand side, I'm just keeping my blueprint as a reference. Okay, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to read it. Okay, so a decorator is essentially a function or a function factory. In this case, it's a function factory. It returns a new function with two input parameters, right? Target and key. If we put the onChange decorator uh, uh, besides a property, then TypeScript would automatically passing the prototype of the class to the target and the property key name or age to the key. So in effect, the object defined property will be triggered during compile time with three parameters again. First, prototype of name card component. Second, property key, name or age, right? 
The third parameter is a configuration object for setter and getter. So basically, this is to modify the existing uh, name card component during compile time and add a getter and a setter for, for name and age, right? Let's, let's take a look at what's inside the getter and the setter. For the getter function, it simply returns something. What's the keyword this here? The keyword this means a instance, a instance of name card component. And the cache value key is a randomly generated number to use that as a key. So here we basically uh, have uh, binding a, a key value pair to the component instance. The value is to store the current value, right? For the setter function, it does two things. The first is to store the new value. And the second is to trigger the callback function. And the callback function is, of course, uh, a parameter of on change decorator. This works. This absolutely works. Uh, just a side note about the master random here. Uh, we need to generate a, randomly, uh, a random key, right? I would recommend a better way to use symbol. So symbol was introduced in ES6. And uh, the biggest features about symbols is that first symbol is absolutely unique. No two symbols are equal. And uh, secondly, a uh, symbol can be used as a object key. So here we, we created two symbols, one for key, uh, sorry, one for name, one for age, right? Okay, this works, this totally works. This works very well. Let me improve it further. First, I don't want to trigger the callback function if the input, uh, sorry, if the old value and the, the new value are equal, right? So I just need to add an if statement by comparing the new value and the old value. If they're the same, just do nothing. My second improvement is better typing. The current problem is that we TypeScript doesn't know, doesn't really know what's the type of the new value here, right? So to, to solve this, we can add a generic type T to the onChange decorator. And we can type the callback function to have a function type which takes in one parameter of type T, right? So in this case, I just need to uh, modify the, uh, our blueprint a little bit by passing a type to the on change decorator. So TypeScript can, uh, knows that the new value here is, uh, is string for the name, and the new value down here for the age is number. The third improvement is simple change. We know that ng on changes not only provides us with new value, right? It also provides us with a previous value and, uh, and some additional information. And that was defined in, in, in a simple change that I showed you just now. So here, I, I want my callback function to have, to have the same amount of information, right? So my callback function uh, should not only have the new value, but also have a optional change, simple change object. So I can do more stuff in my callback function. So to achieve this, okay. So here I modify my, my simple change a little bit by adding a, uh, a generic type T. So the previous value and current value can be typed to T instead of any defined by anchor. Okay, so to illustrate my point better here, let's just focus on the previous value and the current value. Let's just ignore the, the other twos. Okay, so what we need to do in the on change record is three things. The first, in the, in the typing of the callback function, we just need to uh, add a second parameter uh, which has type simple change of t. And just before we call the, call, uh, the callback function, we need to create a simple change object with previous value and the current value. It's easy, it's very easy to get, right? And finally, when we trigger our callback function, we not only pass the new value, we also pass a simple change object. So it is trivial to mention that if you want to implement the full interface of, of simple change, the code will look a little bit more complicated, but there's no additional knowledge around it. Uh, it's just a, mm, 
we, we just use this exact same technique. So I'm going to skip this part. What we can achieve is, is huge, right? So whenever we want to achieve, uh, want to listen to the name, uh, the change of the name property, we just need to add an onChange decorator uh, with the input uh, on, on top of the property. Uh, then we give a callback function, right? So, the, so the, whenever the name is changed, the callback function will be triggered. And the callback function will have access to the new value and uh, some additional information defined in simple change, right? Okay, just some additional notes about this decorator. This decorator can also be used with non-input properties. It doesn't have to, it, we, we don't have to use together with input properties. We can use it uh, together with any regular properties inside the class, but ng on changes can't. We win, right? And it also works very well with dynamic component because dynamic component doesn't really have input property or even ng on changes like second roots. Finally, TypeScript is the only dependency. We don't have to use it. It's not an Angular thing. We don't have to use it in Angular. We can use it anywhere as long as we, as long as we use TypeScript. And uh, I've published this as uh, a NPM package uh, called Property Watch Decorator. Name is long. And uh, this is my, the end of my talk. And uh, if you have any questions, feedbacks, please feel free to, to reach out. Uh, thank you for listening.